to go further on the structure and function relationship of different proteins we already learned the structure of proteins how the structure of proteins identifies or changes the function of a protein will take into consideration an important protein and that is collagen and elastin in this session collagen is the one of the most abundant proteins that is present in the body it is a one of the most abundant connective tissue it is made up of three polypeptide chains i'm giving an overview of the structure each chain is approximately nearly 1000 amino acids each chain is called as an alpha chain now depending on the amino acid sequence difference there are different types of alpha chains like alpha 1 alpha 2 etc collagen is made up of three main amino acids it is always represented by the formula easily as glycine x y what can be x what can be y x can be proline and y can be hydroxy proline or hydroxy lysine we'll go further with the synthesis of collagen where they are synthesized how they are synthesized what are the things that are happening during the synthesis of collagen now collagen the cells which are responsible for the synthesis of collagen are the fibroblasts the osteoblasts the chondroblasts all these cells can synthesize collagen so what do they do after they synthesize collagen it is secreted into the extracellular matrix now in collagen there is a lot of hydroxylation and glycosylation that is taking place this type of modifications which take place after a protein is synthesized is called as post translational modification to give an overview of what exactly is the structure of collagen we call it as a triple helical structure the three alpha chains of collagen as i said it is three there are three chains the three alpha chains of collagen they are helically they are not just one helix but there are three types of them each of the chains are woven around each other and they form a different stru structure and this is called as the triple helical structure this three alpha chains which are intervening together this is called as a tropo collagen i'll go further i'll tell you as the synthesis is taking place how it is synthesized but giving an overview this is called as a tropo collagen now many such tropo collagen molecules i'll just show it briefly as this many such tropo collagen molecules what happens is all these will aggregate together this type of arrangement in which the tropo collagens are arranged this type of structure is called as a quarter staggered structure this whole thing this type of quarter structure each of this is like this triple helical this quarter is called as a collagen fibril this is called as a collagen fibril which has many tropo collagens and arranged in the form of a quarter staggered now there is a reason why you want to know about this is uh, there is a pro disease which uh, can affect collagen synthesis and that is the ehrler danlos syndrome in this the fibrillar collagen is affected and vascular it leads to vascular problems fragile stretchy skins and loose joints now to go further on the synthesis of collagen now synthesis of collagen what is it it is a protein so where it has to start how it takes place and how the structure contributes to the function now it is a protein so the synthesis of this is coded by the chromosome so the synthesis of it will start in the nucleus so in the nucleus we have the dna in the dna we have the genes for collagen so these genes the mrna is transcribed this mrna will come out of the nucleus now what happens it has to get translated dna transcription to mrna mrna has to undergo translation so for this translation different ribosomes will come and attach to the mrna different ribosomes will come and attach once the ribosomes attach what will happen the ribosomes will process this mrna 
and it will result in the formation of a of the first few amino acids and this is called as the this with the amino acid chain this is called as the pre pro alpha chain pre pro alpha chain now this pre pro alpha chain has got a signal sequence this signal sequence tells it where to go so it goes into the endoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum it is in the endoplasmic reticulum that further changes takes place of this alpha chain once it goes the minute it goes there the signal sequence of this pre pro alpha chain whatever signal sequence it has got which told it its address where to go this signal sequence is cleaved off first thing that happens is the signal sequence is cleaved now what happens this pre pro alpha chain is now converted into pro alpha chain this is an alpha chain remember it is not the same as the alpha helix of the secondary structure this is still a chain there is no helical formation now this is the pro alpha chain which has been formed now what happens certain enzymes will act on the pro alpha chain and it results in the hydroxylation of certain proline and lysine residues on this the pro alpha chain gets hydroxylated it is still a pro alpha chain but is hydroxylated what has been hydroxylated the proline residue has been hydroxylated and the lysine residue has been hydroxylated i'll give the reaction in detail later now for this hydroxylation most important thing that is required is vitamin c ascorbic acid is required molecular oxygen is required all this will cause hydroxylation so first change that has happened this is a post translational modification and that has happened is hydroxylation the second change that is going to happen to this is these hydroxylated some of the hydroxylated residues of especially lysine are going to get glycosylated so i'm going to show this as a glycosylated some residues are going to get glycosylated this is also a type of this hydroxylation and glycosylation is a type of post translational modification again which are the which are the substances which can be glycosylated include glucose or galactose so glycosylation takes place now this whole thing which has been glycosylated which has been hydroxylated this is the pro alpha chain which is under this is still a pro alpha chain now what happens it has to get assembled together so what happens is many such pro alpha chains they all come together these pro alpha chains are going to come together what will happen is disulfide bridges are going to be formed between them disulfide bridges the minute the disulfide bridges form between the chains it helps the chains to come together now this is called as a pro collagen pro collagen is where the pro alpha chains have come together we call it a pro collagen this whole thing is taking place in the endoplasmic reticulum this is happening in the endoplasmic reticulum now what has to happen this enters into the golgi remember from endoplasmic reticulum it goes into the golgi i'll talk about this i'll just rub the board and now i'll tell you what happens in the golgi the pro collagen is now in the golgi apparatus golgi apparatus this golgi now what it is this pro collagen it gets secretes the function of the golgi is to form secretory vacuoles so it forms secretory vacuoles and what does this secretory vacuole contain it contains pro collagen so what is a pro collagen the pro collagen is the pro alpha chains which are which are linked by disulfide bridges between intrachain disulfide it still has a bit of a helical structure but it has some extra portions to it so this pro collagen which is present within the vacuole is now secreted out of the cell 
this comes out. This good fluid comes into the extracellular matrix. This is still linked by disulfide bridges the, at the end terminal or the carboxy terminal in both places. It is linked by the disulfide bridges. This procollagen molecule which has now entered into the extracellular matrix, it will be acted upon by certain peptidases. These peptidases are going to break off at both the ends, the end terminal wherever the uh, disulfide bonds are there or the carboxy terminal where the disulfide bonds are there, both these are going to be cleaved off. They are peptidases, they cleave it off. When this is cleaved, what is remaining now? Now this is a, what do you think it is? It is a tropocollagen. As I said, it is still not collagen. It has to still form a quarter structure, only then it becomes a collagen fiber. So right now it is tropocollagen. Tropocollagen is formed. Tropocollagen is procollagen which has been cleaved off the N terminal and the C terminals have been cleaved off. It has formed tropocollagen. The next step is the formation of the quarter structure. This triple helical structure. Now we actually have shown it as three strands, but they are all intervened together like this. These intervened structures are going to come together. This is one tropocollagen, this is another tropocollagen, another tropocollagen, another tropocollagen, in between, in between all these are formed. So what stabilizes these tropocollagens together? So something must happen here, isn't it? So that bonds can be formed between the different tropocollagen molecules. So the formation of this bond is not a disulfide bond. For this, it requires another enzyme. And this enzyme that is required here is called as lysol oxidase. This lysyl oxidase is different from the lysyl hydroxylase which was responsible for hydroxylation of the pro-alpha chains. Lysyl oxidase is in the extracellular whereas it was in the endoplasmic reticulum you had the prolyl hydroxylase and the lysyl hydroxylase which were acting for the hydroxylation of the proline and the, and the lysine residues. Whereas lysyl oxidase is responsible for the conversion of lysine to allylysine or hydroxylysine to lysine is converted to lysine or hydroxylysine similarly is converted to hydroxyallylysine. Now this is the allylysine of one and hydroxyallylysine of another tropocollagen which form the bond between them. And this results in the formation of the final collagen molecule that is the collagen fibrin. Now one important thing over here is this lysyl oxidase requires copper. It is a copper containing enzyme. Just as the way vitamin C was required for the formation of, co of collagen, procollagen and hydroxylation and further post-translation modification, copper is required for the extracellular modification of tropocollagen and for the formation of the collagen molecule. So here I have the, this in the form of a in the form of a flow chart. Look here. The DNA transcription results in the formation of mRNA. The ribosome translation converts pre-pro-alpha chain with the signal sequence which goes to the endoplasmic reticulum. Signal sequence is cleaved, results in the formation of pro-alpha chain hydroxylation, prolyl and lysyl hydroxylases. As I said, there are vitamin C containing enzyme require an absolute requirement for vitamin C. Glycosylation with glucose and galactose. Three pro-alpha chain assembled to form pro-collagen with intragen disulfide bridges enters Golgi, secretory vacuoles, pro-collagen is released into the extracellular matrix, cleaved and tropocollagen is formed, lysyl oxidase acts and allylysine, hydroxyallylysine formed, cross-linking occurs and the collagen fibril is formed. So that is in, in brief the synthesis of collagen. Now we go ahead to one more connective tissue and that is elastin. 
what is elastin and uh, how is it also structure function relationship between different proteins elastin i want to tell the elastin is not as complicated as collagen elastin is a connective tissue it has rubber or elastic like properties and that is why the name elastin now where is this present wherever a tissue has to expand where do you think tissue expands it is present in tissues like lung the lung has to expand when you inspire it has to be present in large arteries like aorta because the aorta has to expand so wherever expansion is required that is where elastin is present it is also present in elastic ligaments so wherever expansion is required that is where elastin is formed now what is important here is uh, here also elastin is synthesized as a tropoelastin which is converted to elastin difference between collagen and elastin is though elastin is also equally rich in proline and lysine it contains very little hydroxyl proline and absolutely no hydroxyl lysine so the main difference is between collagen and elastin is lack of hydroxyl lysine now this elastin is scaffolded it is not doesn't form a cortostatic structure it is mainly scaffolded it also is present in different layers however it is scaffolded by fibrillin and then it causes cross links within the chains now one important disease which is caused because of a deficiency or a problem with elastin is the marfan syndrome where there is an abnormal fibrillin now uh, another important disease which is associated with this connective tissue is what is called as the alpha 1 anti trypsin deficiency alpha aet i'll be talking about this also alpha 1 anti trypsin alpha 1 anti trypsin now what is this what is the name suggest to you anti trypsin means something which is against trypsin so why do we call it anti trypsin where is trypsin found trypsin is actually found in the digestive tract but this anti trypsin can act as an against many enzymes which have trypsin like properties now where is it released from alpha 1 anti trypsin uh, before we go where it is released from what is actually happening in the lungs i'll talk about now where in the lungs there are lot of neutrophils these neutrophils whenever they are, are activated or when they get degenerated they release an enzyme called as neutrophil release from neutrophils so they release an enzyme called neutrophil elastase so what is the name suggest to you elastase so it is going to degrade elastin now this will if it degrades elastin elastin is degraded what will happen this is degraded by elastin is degraded by elastase so what will happen elastin is degraded by elastase so what will happen the lung will lose its power to expand the lung will lose its uh, uh, elasticity so it can lead to a condition called as emphysema so in the body neutrophils are normally activated they are normally undergo degeneration and all that so elasticis is constantly released so to prevent we cannot prevent neutrophil from releasing elastase however the body has a defense mechanism and that is what alpha 1 anti trypsin alpha 1 anti trypsin prevents this elastase it binds to elastase and prevents the degradation of elastin so that is how elastin will remain as it is and the lungs are healthy so what can happen in emphysema in alpha 1 anti trypsin deficiency if there is a genetic deficiency alpha 1 anti trypsin is not there neutrophil elastase will degrade elastin leading to emphysema what happens in smoking now we all know that smoking can lead to certain lung disorders so what is happening in this is smoking has a direct effect on alpha 1 anti trypsin what it does it causes inactivation of certain methionine residues in aat so when it is inactivated alpha 1 anti trypsin is inactivated by smoking it will again lead to elastic degrading elastin leading to emphysema so that is the importance of elastin in this thing